Come join Libby and Molly, the ladies of consignment chats, as we talk about all things consignment. Hi, Sea Chatters. Welcome to episode 54 of Consignment Chats. We are going to be talking all about how to take back your time. That's right. Our Sea Chats book club has wrapped up its last book, which was Take Back Your Time by Christy Wright. So I'm going to give you some of the highlights and tell you how you can take back your time and utilize this book and workbook. But before we get there, uh, it's just me this week. Molly will be back next week, hopefully. She was just a little under the weather. Uh, So this is going to be a little interesting. It's probably going to be a little shorter episode. We'll see what happens because I don't have anybody to talk back to. (laughs) All right. So we will be talking about uh, Take Back Your Time by Christy Wright. If you like this channel, please and you like this video and you're looking forward to it, please hit that like button and subscribe to Consignment Chats on YouTube. If you're on Apple Podcasts, go ahead when you're done listening, hop over to Apple Podcasts and give us a review. We totally appreciate that. So happy new year. Welcome to 2022. Um, Hopefully you guys are watching this in real time. If not, we're in 2022 right now and we've just started this exciting new year. And I'm super excited to be starting this with C Chats. We have our new mission statement, which is building a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. And that is our mission. And it's so cool that we were able to define that and we know where we're headed and we know some of the amazing things we will be bringing you this year. So if you missed when we defined our mission statements, I know we have a couple people in the community that are working on theirs right now. Uh, I'm going to tell you, let's see, episode 50 is where we talk about mission statements and how important and transformative that can be to your business. So if you're on the fence and you're thinking about it, go ahead, listen to episode 50 and see if that maybe will help you out to develop a mission statement. Then go over, hop in our community, uh, Consignment Chats community on Facebook and let us know what you think. Let us know where you are with your mission statement. We also have a very cool challenge going on with mission statements. When you complete yours, hop on TikTok and Instagram and make a cute little reel with it. If you want to see the ones we did, uh, hop over to Consignment Chats on TikTok or on Instagram and take a look at those videos. And it's just a short sentence, as I just read, building a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. So if you are one of those collaborative resellers out there, um, Tell us who you're collaborating with and bring them into our community because that's what we're looking for. And I know a lot of us are super busy, so let's get down to business. Okay. Oh, wait. So we did our episode on mission statements, but for those of you listening on podcast, we also have a workshop that is only available on YouTube. It's just a quick chat. It's less than 20 minutes. And it's Molly and I actually coming up and workshopping our mission statement for C-Chats. So if you want to see actually the process of how we did that and if it may help, it's probably one of the best 20 minutes you're going to spend. Uh, It will just keep, keep giving back. So I'm excited to see what you guys are coming up with for your mission statements. I'm just really looking forward to that in 2022. Okay, so let's get into Take Back Our Time. In episodes 36 and 38, we went live, Molly, Tiffany, and I, and we talked all about time management, our struggles, the tools we use to manage that time, and they are awesome. They've been some of our most popular episodes So I'll link those up if you want to go check those out. Definitely, definitely worth it. So the reason I'm mentioning that is because Take Back Your Time has to do with time management, but it's on a little bit of a higher overview level. So if you are finishing up Take Back Your Time, do that first and then go back and listen to the time management episodes because the time management episodes are more about tools. The Take Back Your Time book that we're discussing in the C-Chats book club is about 
what you want your life to look like. What kind of person do you want to be and what are the steps you need to take and what you need to priorities prioritize to get there. So, all right. So in our C Chats book club, it is a private group on Facebook. You do not need to belong to it, but if you're interested, go over there, hop in, and you can see every week we met and we discussed this book, members of our community. We discussed this book and I recorded a private video on Zoom, which if you're a member of the group, you can see. And you can follow along every week as we discuss and, and as you're reading it, go back and watch the episodes and uh, see how other people are implementing this or what our thoughts and take on it was. So that is a great resource. Now, at the end of January, we are going to meet again, still about Take Back Your Time, and we're kind of going to do a like, where are we now? What are we struggling with? What has really worked for us? Um, And hold each other kind of accountable for that. So at the end of January, we're going to meet. Feel free to join in. You can join in now, finish up the book and the workbook. There is an accompanying workbook that is phenomenal. Uh, When you put the work in, you will see the results. You will see the results. I am recommending this book. It's definitely been transformative, I think, for everybody who participated. So if you're hopping in after the fact, go ahead, join up with us, the Sea Chats Book Club on Facebook, and you can have access to those private videos. And um, please provide your feedback and contribute because One of the neat things about this book is we all have very different lives, different ideas, and that's kind of where this all starts, is what does balance look like for you? And that's really the first part of the book, and it's so important. And a lot of people, like if you just think about it in a cursory manner, kind of like I did, you would think, all right, well, you know, I want to spend 50% of my time at home, 50% of my time at work, 50% of my time on my business, 50% of time on house stuff, whatever. Um, But it's actually so much more than that. And so she goes through and, you know, we have the workbook and we filled it all out and discussed it every week. And really, there are different, different seasons, different times of your life, and that balance isn't necessarily a percentage. It's about being present and deciding how you want to spend your time and what's important to you. You know, some seasons work may be number one on the priority list. Other seasons, family may be number one. Uh, you know, it's totally up to you. But having that definition And having that, it's kind of like a mission statement for your life. So it does tie in with missions and understanding what is important to you. One of the things I will say that if you read this book, do yourself a favor. The workbook is free. It comes with the book. You just download it. Write down your answers to the workbook questions. Because a lot of times it's different than what's spinning in your head. There were so many times and others agreed with me where I would go to, um, I would think I would know the answer off the top of my head. But when I really sat and thought about it and wrote it down, it was something, something that I hadn't expected or something different came out. So I really highly recommend doing the workbook. Um like we go through like the first thing is why do you feel why do you feel out of balance most people I think do feel out of balance and if you don't great (laughs) give us give us reasons and things that work for you as well I'd love to hear I'd love to hear feedback and what's working for everybody but I'm just going to go through a little cursory um thing here why we feel out of balance and these are the things in the book that we talk about is doing too many things. Mm. Yeah, all right. So if you're a reseller, you probably definitely can, can, yeah, you can definitely see how that happens. Not doing enough things. Um, I don't know. A lot of us are real hustlers. I don't know if that would really apply, but that's, that's your personal business. 
Okay, doing the wrong things and not doing the right things. Okay, doing the wrong things. This was a real sticking point for me and I really delved into this and why I was doing the wrong things and I couldn't wait to eliminate some of those wrong things that weren't feeding toward my mission of who I want to be and what I want for my life. And it can get very easy to get caught up in a lot of things. Um, Different time stealers. The need to be loved. The need to impress others. The need to prove yourself. The need to feel accomplished. And the need to escape. This this was a little mind-blowing. Because I don't... It definitely made me think of things in a different light. Like, why am I doing something? What are the reasons behind why I'm doing that? Like, maybe I'm doing that. um, Maybe I'm doing something for somebody or volunteering because I have that need to be loved. But is that really serving? Is that really serving me? Is that really serving my mission? Or is that just kind of an insecurity? So uh, it was definitely interesting to look at different time stealers. Um, Then you know, we get into defining what is important to you and how you want to spend your time and the person you want to be. So it is very high level. Um, you five, five things of how you want to be. What kind of person do you want to be? And one of the things that was actually kind of funny that came out that we, we talked quite a bit about was the need to be clean and organized to be productive. I I didn't realize how this important this was to me personally, but also um, others in the club identified in the book club identified with that. And it was very important for them to have a clean, organized life, space, business in order to be productive and feel successful and feel balanced. So that was one of the things that I'm definitely going to embrace and work on and definitely stop apologizing for. Um, constantly apologizing for, I don't know why I'm apologizing for it, but maybe some of you can relate to this, like why I need the house clean or why it's important to me to have this organized or don't put that there. Um, Yeah, so maybe some of you can kind of relate to that, but I'm going to stop apologizing for it because it is one of the things I need and it is part of my mission and it is very important to me. So maybe there are other things out there that are important to you that you really hadn't realized. Hmm. Stuff to think about. Uh, You go through what matters most. You know, what makes you happy, what brings you joy, and focus on those things and make sure they are a part of your life and your schedule. All right, here we go. This is the part that everybody related to across the board. Distractions. What are those distractions? What is keeping us from being present? Hmm. Yeah, I think we all have a couple of those to work on. So here are some of the ones that were listed in the book. And see, just take a minute and see if you identify with any of these. Distraction one, making others' problems your problems. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think I've said that to myself a lot in the past year. Not my problem. Not my problem, not my problem. It's not because I don't wanna help, it's just that's not where my time is best spent. Uh, Focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah, all right, focusing on the wrong thing. A lot of times people get in the thing that's popping into my head right off the bat is let's say on YouTube or Instagram, like vanity metrics. Like, am I focusing on that? Am I focusing on the right thing? This is also where your mission statement will help you out. Overdoing it. Doing things to feel productive. Yeah, that's one for me too. Uh, And screens. Yes, mindlessly scrolling on Instagram. 
um, mindlessly, you know, watching Netflix or binging on something that we don't really, we're not really that terribly interested in. Is that really the best use of our time? Are we using that as an escape? Is that a distraction? Because, you know, how cool is it to be engaged and be present where you actually are. And I'm not saying like don't watch Netflix and I don't think that was the point or don't scroll on Instagram. But when you do that, have time set aside and make it make sure it's something you're truly enjoying that's bringing a, a benefit to your life that's making you happy. And if it's not, maybe it's time to ditch that distraction. Uh, I think a lot of us will probably struggle with the fact that we need boundaries around screens. As part of our jobs, we, I mean, I personally, and probably most of you, have to do social media, right? That's, that's part of what we do. That's part of building community. That's part of our jobs. So what are the, boundary, what are the boundaries around that social media? Hmm. Something you might want to give some consideration and, and, and thought to. I personally try to set a timer, do it at a certain time each day, and not mindlessly scroll and get distracted because sometimes social media doesn't make me feel that good. I mean, when I'm interacting with all of you in the community and answering questions, but sometimes when I'm watching all the other amazing stuff that people are doing, it, it doesn't really make me feel that great. I mean, I'm happy for all of you and your successes. That's not what I'm talking about. I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and you get into that whole comparison game and it just it just doesn't serve serve me in any way. And I think I think I'm probably not alone in that. Just drop a comment. Let me know. Um so being present. This is a really really hard one and we've talked about this in other in in other sea chats episodes it's definitely a recurring theme it is some of the most successful and it turns out based on research some of the happiest people and the people that experience most joy are present present means when they're home with their kids or they're playing a game they're 100 percent present when they're working on, let's say, recording a video, they're 100% present for that. And they're able to focus and, and keep that in check. And that's something that I think probably most of us need to work on. I know I definitely do. I don't know, I don't know anybody that maybe couldn't use a little work in that area of being present. But the most beautiful thing being present does is eliminates the guilt. I think the second I became a parent, it really hit me uh, when I was at work. I felt guilty because I wasn't at home. When I was at home, I felt guilty because I wasn't at work. And I was always thinking about where I wasn't, where I wasn't, and I wasn't present. And it was just constant. And it was probably always there. It just really came to the surface when I uh, had children. I always felt guilty. And being present eliminates that, like appreciating where you are. One way to center yourself is to just be grateful. You know, if you find yourself losing focus, stop. Think of five things you're grateful for in that very moment. You have to be present in order to do that. So just a little food for thought. I think we're all going to be work on being more present this year. Oh. And here's a little quote at the bottom here. Balance is less about a 50-50 split and more about being 100% present wherever you are. And the things that will come from that, I think, will truly be amazing. And I'm excited to hear you all report in on that. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a great journey. So let's see what else I have here. I think that might be... Like, definitely grab the book if you're interested. We have, it'll be linked up. This is the book. Uh, there is a free download of the workbook that accompanies it. I highly recommend doing that. 
I highly recommend uh, hopping in the group, getting some accountability going, talking about where you are, watching some of the videos. And I think as a community, we can definitely support each other in this. And I'm just very excited about it. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. My MacBook just decided to not be present. <laughs> All right, hopefully it is still working. All right, so if this was helpful to you, definitely hit that like button and subscribe to the Consignment Chats channel. We'd love to have you if you're listening on podcasts. Hop over to YouTube for some of the extra things that we have, like our mission workshop. There are little quick chat videos that might be helpful if you're just listening on podcast. And thank you for joining us. The Sea Chats Book Club, we will be, oh, I guess I'll announce our next book now. Heck, let's do it. All right, so the one that lost out last, well, I guess it was a couple months ago when we voted. Uh, we voted between Take Back Your Time and Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Definitely a classic. This has updated references. We will have somebody joining us in the book club that has the original, so it'll be kind of fun to uh, go back and see how the references are different. But this was published in the 1930s, and it is still relevant. It was one of those books that I have to say I always saw and thought sounded gimmicky. So I never read it. I never... I just never picked it up. It sounded too gimmicky. And I was listening to my buddies over at the Pure, at Pure Hustle podcast, and they were doing a level up review, and it was on how to win friends and influence people. So as they were talking about it, I was like, oh, they had some of the same ideas I had about it. Like it sounded gimmicky. It's just not really, we're not really into that. And as they were talking about it, I... I was like, yeah, I got to read this book. So I picked it up and I was just wanted to share it with everybody. I wanted to share it with my kids. I wanted to share it with my friends. And now I'm going to get the opportunity to do that. So we're going to have the book club starting in February. We will be discussing this book. So you have plenty of time to pick it up. I think we're going to stick with the weekly meetings, weekly Zoom meetings to discuss each chapter because that was really, really helpful. And it was also great that people shared so much personally. And I think this book actually, when I read it, I don't know, two years ago, year and a half ago, definitely changed the way I interact with people, how I think about things. It was way more pivotal than I had anticipated. So um, I hope you'll join us. And if you've already read it, let's read it again. I'm reading it again as we go through it. So thank you all for joining us today. Well, joining me today. I guess there are other people listening, so I feel like there's an us. And, oh, let me grab my coffee cup. Cheers. Thanks for joining Libby and Molly, the ladies of Consignment Chats. To find out more and keep chatting, find Consignment Chats on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and podcast. As always, you can find all of this information at consignmentchats.com. Thanks for joining us.